Hey everyone, so you can probably tell by the title of this video, this is going to be a little different than my normal content. Uh, today I'm actually going to be doing a collection video. Uh, this video was mostly inspired by Ethan uh, of Blade Bias, uh, Camaro EE you might know him by, but I just watched his collection video, uh, thought he did a really good job with it, and then he also just hosted the Bally Awards. Uh, he actually asked me to do an introduction for one of the categories for that, which I made a quick video for, made a fun little song about, uh, and it kind of just reminded me how much I like making battle song videos. So I figured I'd make a little collection video update at the top of the year. Uh, collections changed a little bit over the last two years too, so this is just kind of a fun way for me to go through everything, see where I'm at, um, kind of state of my collection at this point. And, uh, and so I have quite a few Bally's in this case. I'm actually going to be doing this case a little bit later on. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But I thought a good place to start would be with this case, which is, this is actually kind of the case I have for all of the Bally's that I don't flip so much anymore. This is kind of like my non-flipping Bally case. Uh, but I figured if we're going to start somewhere... Start at the beginning with my Benchmade 62. So you guys probably already all know this, but the 62 is not a very good uh, flipper. Mine is actually also not in flipping shape at all at the moment. My safe handle is binding quite a bit. Um, I don't flip this thing anymore for probably obvious reasons, but this is kind of where it all started for me. Um, I saw this online. I thought it looked cool. I didn't do very much research into uh, what Bally's flipped good and which didn't. So I wound up with this. I actually learned a whole bunch of tricks with this. Um, I learned, you know, full twirl, half twirl, uh, zen roll over helix, eight ball. Like all the basic tricks I actually did pretty much all with this. It was, I think, maybe a year until I got my quote-unquote better Bally, which was actually just another Benchmade 51, which I'll get to later. That's in the other case. But uh, yeah, this is what started it all right here. Uh, more non-flipping Bally's. I don't even know if it's worth getting all these out, but we've got CSGO Trainer. Sound off in the comments. We've got two of my favorites. I actually do flip these from time to time just because they're kind of fun. Uh, we got Bally Fork and Bally Spoon. Bally Spoon is actually pretty fun to flip too. I'm not going to probably be doing a whole lot of flipping, but... Uh, we've got this guy, which is kind of like, I actually bought this for Anno practice, because uh, these handles, it's a channel, I mean, obviously not in great shape, um, kind of a cool little crisp blade there, a uh, really thin blade, I mean, this thing is not very great, uh, but I uh, originally bought this for Anno practice, and it just thought it looked kind of cool, and then I started flipping around and playing with it a little bit, I actually kind of thought it was a fun little flipper, I thought it looked kind of neat, just with the completely plain handle, so uh, I didn't end up messing with it. I didn't end up annoying it. I've since sold my power supply too, so uh, kind of that ship has sailed, but there's a reason it's in the kind of reject case, not the main case. Um, here is, this is our M-Tech kind of CCC. Uh, I wanted to see what it was like to flip with slightly curved handles, and this thing actually does flip kind of well. I kind of enjoy flipping it, uh, but it is a CCC. Um, obviously not a great performance flipper. You probably won't see this in too many videos uh, coming up or anytime in the future. Uh, well, last one I got in this case, actually one, be a first come first serve. I'm actually trying to get rid of this guy. But kind of a cool, um, it's like a Bally Karambit. This is from Mantis Knives, I believe is the name. This is the Vuja Day, which is like deja vu backwards. Um, kind of a cool little piece. Bought it just for fun, see how it goes. Um, you can flip it, I guess, if you if you want to, but I don't. So that's it for case number one, reject case.
non-flipping case. I don't know, some decent stuff in here, but onto the good stuff. So these next four, I actually don't even keep in a case. I kind of keep these floating out because I do use these um, just during kind of my daily life, just with flipping, but also obviously BB bar flies have a practical use as a bottle opener. So I like to kind of keep these out. They're kind of bulky to fit in the case anyway. So, uh, you know, I'll kind of keep one in my drawer or just at my desk. But this was uh, one of my first trainers, actually. I don't, um, you'll see, I do have a decent amount of trainers. Most of them are kind of, Kind of on the cheaper side, but the the barflies are kind of some of my some of my nicer trainers. Um, got the OG this thing is a tank. I've had this for that's probably cl close to ten years now. Um, but yeah, love that thing. We got the V two. Got the ghost stickers on here. Um, yeah, definitely a big upgrade from the OG one to the OG two. You do get actual hardware in here, which is nice, and it is quite a bit quieter. It's still pretty loud, but definitely a step up from the V1. Uh, next we got, I believe this is the Pro V3. Uh, yeah, this thing flips really well. It's a little bit smaller than I was expecting, but uh, yeah, I really like really like how these came out. Um, just a big, big supporter of BB Barfly and all that they're doing over there and then of course we have the bb firefly uh, i got the red one and then you can see the handles have all been mirror polished uh not too much of a mirror anymore this thing is not quite gone through the ringer but i flipped this for uh, let's say i got the um i got the mirror polished on a really long time ago uh, done by uh, Maddie Stigel Choppers on Instagram. Check definitely check him out if you haven't yet. Uh, he posts a lot of flips. Uh, he does some really good mod work, or at least when he gets a chance to. Um, I'm not sure how much modding he's doing these days anymore. But uh, Maddie, if you're watching, it's up to you. Uh, but yeah, love the uh, love the BB Firefly. Uh, this thing flips really well. Opens bottles really well too. Um, Love my, love my BB Barflies. So I thought it'd be fun, not just my actual Bally collection to go through, but also some of my other accessories, other products. So here is my oil collection. Let's get these guys organized a little bit. You can see KPL is well represented. Uh, if you didn't already know, uh, I actually used to do some like independent contractor work for KPL. Um, used to write for their blog quite a bit. Um, all the articles are still up, so definitely check those out. Um, I think there's some pretty good stuff up there, some pretty interesting stuff. Obviously, I'm biased because I, I wrote them, but um, yeah, I pretty much only use KPL, actually, and these actually aren't the bottles that I use. You'll see those in the in the maintenance section of the video. Uh, but KPL's cool. They got their ultralight they got they're heavy uh, i don't use the ultralight so much but i do use this sometimes for if my pivots are really gunky or dirty uh you can kind of use this as like almost like a flush so you don't want to use water obviously to like clean it out but uh the ultralight's really thin so you can use that to kind of almost like flush out a lot of that grime and dirt um wipe out a lot of the excess and then i'll put either my heavy or most of the time i usually just use original um but nice thing about KPL and kind of sticking with just one brand of oil is that uh, all their oil weights are all compatible. So I'm not going to get any like weird reactions or anything um, mixing these with any of the other ones. Uh, also got some of their dry film. Um, they sent me some of this just to kind of check out and uh, definitely works really well for uh, folders, flippers, um, kind of other styles, pocket knives. Not the best for Bally's, except uh, I will shout out. Um, uh, Jack, Piatti Pyro, uh, you might actually like this stuff because it basically feels like it runs dry, but it's going to have like a little micro uh, microfilm on there. So it's like technically lubricated. Uh, but I know you're uh, one of those crazy people who uh, flips super dry. So I don't know. Maybe you'd like some of this stuff. Uh, next time I see you, I'll bring it. Maybe you can try it out. Um, flawless transition into FBO, obviously doing those right after KPL. It's kind of weird, but uh, I actually won these in um, some kind of like giveaway or contest. Uh, I think I smelled them when I first got them because that was like the big thing was like the scented oils. 
No, I smell alright, but I don't remember really ever using these, to be honest. Um, because I've been using KPL, so... Uh, fight me in the comments, I guess. Uh, next up, we got Carbon Honey. These are, I think also, these are both gifts, I believe, from Maddie, uh, Stay Gold Choppers. He either was or still is um, sponsored by Carbon Honey, and they gave him uh, some sample bottles to pass out at one of the meets we were at, either in, I forget if we were in Iowa or Michigan. We've gone to a, a few out in those places. Uh, but yes, big thanks to him for hooking me up with these. This one... One of them's the heavy, one of them's the regular. We'll say on there. Yeah, this is, so this is the thick, thick sample. So we got the thick and the regular. Um, I liked Carbon Honey. I didn't have much against them. Um, I haven't used them much, mainly because of the applicator. This one's, let's see if I can open it up. Got kind of... So the applicator, you got this, um, you know, kind of dropper that comes out uh, versus, you know, what I'm used to with KPL. There we go. Uh, KPL's got the needle applicator, which is really nice. It's just a lot easier to get right into that pivot uh, versus the Carbon Honey, which just has that thicker applicator. So, um, yeah, I'm big KPL. Um, uh, I definitely stand by KPL. I've been using these, you know, their oil for years and years. Um, probably will for years and years forthcoming, but uh, two more oils to go through. Didn't want this to be such an oil video. This is, uh, gosh, NRB. NRB's, uh, I think this is regular. It might be thick. Uh, I've had this for so long, I don't remember where or how I got this. Uh, but uh, smells like strawberries, I think. Uh, I actually kind of like this oil. Uh, I just don't use it that much. Again, it's just because KPL is really nice being cross-compatible with all their different oil weights. And uh, I usually just, I don't want to keep multiple oils in my case with me, so I usually just have KPL. Uh, here we got, this is my pride and joy of the oil collection, some old BRS Hyper Oil. I don't think they've sold this stuff in years. This stuff is super thin. Uh, this would be like a KPL Ultralight. Uh, this is like, I mean, really just more of a collector's item at this point. Um, the sticker was coming off, so I had to duct tape it on. Now it's just really kind of gross and sticky. But I thought it'd be kind of cool to show this off. A little blast from the past. Um, yeah, drop a comment if you guys remember this oil. Uh, it'll help my engagement. Anyway, before we end with the oil section, uh, just wanted to give one quick, I guess, last shout out to KPL. Also use Knife Shield quite a bit. This is just a nice, like, metal uh, blade titanium cleaner. Um, also co corrosion inhibitor, uh, so it'll prevent rust. Um, I live in Illinois. I am like right by Lake Michigan, so we get a little bit of humidity. I'm out in Chicago. Uh, I've never really had much of a problem with Bally's rusting, except for um, Benchmade's use D2, which rusts a lot more easily than uh, like 154 CM um, or any of the other steels that most uh, Bally's use these days. Uh, so I haven't had a huge problem with that, except for uh, yeah, my bench maze using the D2, and then I've got an Archangel, which you'll see later, uses uh, the Carbon V, which is a high carbon steel, and that rusts like crazy. It was actually, it was actually super pitted when I got it, um, so use some knife shield, really helped me clean that up, uh, knock a lot of that rust off. Um, also, ooh, wasn't going to say this, but before I forget, if you are going to pick up any KPL stuff, uh, I do still have an affiliate code. Uh, just affiliate code bark handle. If you're picking up any KPL oils or uh, knife shield, they got some really cool micro swabs. I'll show that in my um, in my maintenance kit later on. Uh, but if you are picking up anything from KPL, uh, use code bark handle at checkout. You'll save I forget how much it is 10, 15 percent, whatever it is. Um, I'll get a little kickback too, though. So um, kind of win win for everyone. Go KPL. Anyway. Moving on to the next stuff. What's the next stuff? Hey, before we go to the next stuff, let's do just a couple more little things. Like I said, I'm just trying to do kind of like all my Bally stuff. I got a couple BRS coins. Uh, this one came with one of my orders from BRS. I don't remember what knife I got this with, but kind of cool. It's got the kind of alpha beast on this side, replicant on this side. 
Uh, and then this one, this was, this one I actually bought. This was like their commemorative, um, I guess this would have been, yeah, the 10 year of the Alpha Beast debut in 2012. So I must have gotten this in 2022. Just a lot of cool little Alpha Beast specs and stuff on here. Um, Alpha Beast is my favorite knife. It was really like still my favorite knife to flip, but also I just remember seeing old like YouTube videos when I was first getting into flipping and just looking at it and just being like, holy cow, like that knife looks so cool. Like, which one is that? Uh, found out it was the Alpha Beast. And of course, like everybody does when they see a cool bally online, someone flipping it and they're like, wow, that thing's awesome. Uh, I'm going to go get one. And then it's like, oh, they're sold out everywhere except for, uh, you know, on eBay, you can get one for, you know, three grand or whatever it is. So uh, it took me a while before I actually got my first Alpha Beast. Uh, I'll talk about these all when I show my Alpha Beast and all that. But um, yeah, there's my Alpha Beast coin. Uh, just kind of keep that in the nice case I got with it. Anyway, back to the actual Bally's. We get the good case. So here is my good case. Main case. This is another BRS vault case. That's what the last one was too. Last one was a carbon fiber. This one was just a regular one. Uh, obviously you can't tell because it's got so many stickers on it. Um, a lot of them are like Bally spindle stickers. Um, I really like this one. This was like a live, laugh, love kind of uh, play. Flip, flap, blood. I don't know. Live, laugh, love. Whatever. Um, I love this one. I'm a D&D &D player. So obviously you got the natural one for stop and then natural 20 for go kind of like a stoplight thing uh some local bands on here um other company stickers damn right i got knives shop sweat um jk uh machine wise you guys can i don't know pause the video i guess if you want and look at all the stickers sous or hot sauce pick up some hot sauce bet if you like hot sauce this is the best hot sauce i've ever had i love it anyway let's get to the case Opening her up. It was an off the cuff sound I didn't plan on making, but I hope it wasn't too weird. Uh, before I get into the actual stuff, let's go to. Um, here's a custom slip my buddy made me. Um, this fits. Originally, he made it to fit my 51, which is just kind of nice. Uh, this isn't my main belly spindle, but uh, again, it's just like some bonus stickers. Um, haven't really used that one. Uh, getting into some of the goodies in here. Here we go. These are my Bally socks from Indiana John. These are like end caps that go on the end. Uh, they'll add a little bit of weight, obviously. They'll also protect your handle ends, which is really nice because when you drop a lot, those, that's the parts that get uh, beat up the most. So I really like those. Uh, really like my zippy glow in the dark end caps. Um, We've had some good times flipping with these uh, at Blade Show, kind of charging them up and then passing it off. Uh, yeah, good times. These work really, really well. Um, really like these bad boys. Um, look pretty good, especially when you're flipping at, uh, at night. And they fit a ton of ballys too. Uh, you've got little slots in there for tungsten weights. So if you do want even, you know, these will add a little extra weight, not much, but a little bit. If you don't want even more weight, uh, you can add some tungsten in there get a little bit extra weight after that. And then let's start with the minis. Mini Alpha Beast number one. I haven't brought this guy out in a while. Mini Alpha Beast number one. Mini, eight, mini FHM with double latch. Mini Plastic Bally, Mini Alpha Beast, even minier, number two. And this was, I think, you know, marketed as a, as a Mini 42, but it's got Zen pins. So I'm gonna call this a Mini 62. So here they are. Kind of approximately biggest to smallest. And then you can see next to a regular Alpha Beast, these guys are pretty small. It's so small. But anyway, into the main collection. I'm going to put these guys away real quick. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So I do have one extra one that, not technically in the main case, but I consider this like a main case battle song. Um, I'm actually going to start here. Again, uh, one of my buddies made this uh, custom leather sheath for it. Um, really cool also because it's got 
this little Band-Aid slot in it. Uh, with, this was the original Band-Aid he gave me. Um, I don't know if it was Halloween or what, but um, yeah, really cool custom sheath for the Owl Bow Song Proto Number no. 4. This thing, obviously, you can probably tell it's entirely handmade. Uh, I just think this thing has such a cool look to it. Um, I don't know if you guys know much about Owl Bow Song. I don't think he's still making too many ballys. Uh, I think there's, I don't know, five or six of his protos floating around the community. Um, I'm not sure exactly where all of them are, but uh, this one found a home here. Uh, really happy to have it. Uh, I really do love flipping this thing. It's gigantic. It's uh, it's it's huge. I'll put it up next to uh, one of my more normal valleys in a sec here. But yeah, that's number one. Number two, one I'm sure you're all very familiar with. This is the Alpha Beast Premium Green Anno that I flip in most of my videos, probably over 90% of them. Uh, I've had this for, gosh, I think uh, maybe seven or eight years now. Um, not super beat, but definitely my most well-used Bally I've ever had. Um, kind of see, uh, if you do a really low voltage anno, you can get a brown, um, and I, I just kind of like the, the green and brown combo you get here. Really subtle, but uh, I just haven't seen a whole lot of other valleys that are like that. Uh, super tipped. Well, not super tipped, but it's tipped. Um, blades in decent shape. Still a you know, good cutting edge on this. I, I do most of my cutting tax, tasks just with this. Um, but yeah, still no tap. Very little play. This thing is a uh, absolute tank. When the BRS says, you know, battle-tested, um, believe it. Because this is still by far favorite knife, favorite flipper, favorite knife of all time. Yeah, so this is also what the these two look like next to each other. If we line them up down here, you can see that is one big boy. Big boy of an owl. Uh, next up, I guess we'll just go down the line. This was my most recent acquisition. Uh, this is a DDR Gemini Archangel. So if you're at all familiar with uh, the Cold Steel Archangel, uh, Daryl Ralph did the design for it, Cold Steel produced it, and Cold Steel discontinued it. And I think at a certain point, Daryl Ralph, uh, the late Daryl Ralph, R.I.P., uh, he decided he wanted these to go back into production. I don't think Cold Steel wanted to do it. And he kind of said, uh, well, I'm going to do it. <laughs> so he just did it on his own. Uh, he called it the Gemini. Uh, I, I could be getting this story wrong. I think that's pretty much the gist of it. I'm probably missing some details here and there. But uh, yeah, I've always, I always really loved the look of the of the Archangel and just the the whole pattern and the handles. Uh, this is, it was one of like the original, uh, you know, back when the Benchmade 42 was huge, these were like the original two channel titanium ballys that were on the market. Uh, nowadays they'll go for, you know, crazy prices cause they're old, rare, discontinued and all that. But you know, back in the day they, they were, uh, it was kind of these and 42s were two of your big performance flippers. Uh, so obviously this is not one of the old ones. This is a newer one from Daryl Ralph. Uh, but yeah, just got this in a trade. Really love it. It's a lot lighter than the flipping I'm used to. Uh, I know a lot of flippers are starting to flip a lot lighter these days. Um, not a bad thing or a good thing, I guess. It's just, uh, I guess, a little different, but a little bit lighter than at least the, the Alpha Beast, which is mostly what I'm used to. Uh, next up, we got Machine Y Serif. No Anno, just raw. Uh, also a little bit on the lighter side, also a little bit on the longer side. Uh, this is, in case you're not aware, um, faux, ch not faux channel, sorry, Chanwich construction. Um, was just voted, I think, best sounding ballet. I can't do, like, good sound checks. That's the best you're going to get. Uh, but I think it was just voted best sounding ballet of 2023 in the ballet awards. Uh, again, check that out if you missed it, um, it was a really cool award ceremony done by uh, Ethan, again, Camaro EE, Blade Bias. Um, really cool, uh, really involved member of the community. Uh, but he got a bunch of other 
people to, you know, community members to do like introductions on some of the awards. It was all community voted, community nominated, community voted. So uh, really cool thing. But yeah, I think the Serif, either the Serif or just Machine Wise uh, ended up with several awards for the Ballet Awards. Um, this was kind of special to me too. I got this at uh, Blade Show 2022, I think. Um, and I went there. I was, uh, every year I've been, I've gone, uh, worked the KPL booth. Uh, and I went there thinking, cool, I'll be there on kind of like a work trip, you know, I'll work the KPL booth, kind of check out the, check out the comp, um, you know, hang out, meet some flippers in person, all that. Uh, but I'm not going to buy anything. That's what I said to myself. I'm not going to go, I'm not going to buy any ballys, um, you know, unless there's something crazy that comes up or, you know, I can't get, you know, can't resist or whatever. And, uh, sure enough, I flipped a serif. One of the days I was there, and I was like, okay, I might be going home with the Seraph. So uh, that was, I mean, that was when Seraphs were first dropping. Uh, I think these were going, I think this was 650 new. But yeah, this was when, uh, so this was when the Seraphs were kind of first out. And yeah, something like 650 new, and then aftermarket, they were going for, I think I saw some go for like over a grand. So uh the supply was really low at the time. Demand was really high. Um, I think I had to get in there early to Blade to get my hands on just one of the ones uh, from Dalen because they were just going so quick at the time. Uh, but anyway, I'm super happy I did. I couldn't be happier with this. Uh, still one of my favorite flippers. Uh, kind of how this is going to work is kind of top row. I do a lot more flipping than bottom row with the exception of maybe this guy which I'll, I'll get to later but um yeah absolutely amazing bally uh definitely recommend it next up we got my only double edge bally in my collection this is a real cold steel archangel this is one of the old original ones uh these are super hard to come by now um i had to pay a little bit of a premium to get this bad boy uh, this is the one I think I mentioned earlier. It came super pitted. Uh, it was in not the best shape when I got it, so I cleaned it up quite a bit. It still doesn't have the sharpest edge on it. The tip is, I mean, you can see, a little tipped up there. So it's not in the best shape, but super fun to flip. Um, I didn't get this to kind of baby or, you know, safe queen or anything. I did want to flip this. Um, yeah, these run on washers, so you got tap. You're going to have play, uh, but that's fine with me next in the top row last in the top row we have another alpha beast this is the kukri premium uh really happy to have gotten my hands on one of these uh, i don't think there's a whole lot of kukris out there um, especially the premiums uh, this one's still in really good shape i really only flip it over my uh pad here you can see even just the tip just gets stuck just from doing that just a little bit um so yeah this is still pretty much factory new uh, really cool to flip. Got a little bit of a heavier blade than the uh, standard kind of scimitar alpha beast, but um, just love the alpha beast. Love the handle look. Uh, love how they flip. Love the kukri blade. Um, I just think it's a really cool blade shape. Uh, not a whole lot else to say about this bad boy. Kind of interesting to compare the two different greens. Uh, this one came out a lot later, like several years later than, than this one. So kind of two different greens. I'm kind of partial to this one, but that's probably just because I'm much more used to looking at it. You can see how much the Anno is worn on here, too. This is still, like, all original Anno. But, yeah, those are the Alpha Beasts. And you know what? As I was showing you, these Alpha Beasts, it reminded me, I do keep one extra Alpha Beast in my closet as a safe queen. This one's special. This one I don't flip all that much. Probably already know. This is the Chab, but it is a... Pilot Chab. I was super stoked when the Chab first came out. Um, I remember I was going to hang out with a buddy. I think he was over at my apartment. We were getting ready to go. And I was kind of like, hey, dude, like, I know we got to get going, but uh, there's this knife drop <laughs> happening in uh, three minutes. And I really just got to be on my laptop hitting refresh to make sure I get one of these. Um, so, you know, bear with me. But, uh, yeah, give me a few minutes, just hang out, watch TV or something like that. So, uh, yeah, really lucky to have gotten my hands on one of these. Um, it was really fun to flip when I first got it, but I did I, I did kind of want to get this one almost like a collector's piece because uh, 
you know, I wasn't there for the Alpha Beast V1s, obviously. Um, I'm probably, I did get to flip a Dirty Dozen once, but I'm probably never going to be owning a Dirty Dozen. But I thought this would be kind of a cool beast, a cool piece of Alpha Beast history, seeing that it is my favorite knife. So to have one of the first of the channel Alpha Beasts, uh, kind of just happy to be part of that BRS history. Um, having one of my favorite knives and one of its newest first runs of the newest iteration at least at the time so uh last alpha beast one two three uh i used to have an alpha beast infinity also uh i sold that a little while back uh i just found myself not flipping it that much but cool knife nonetheless uh before i get into second row i got one last little non-knife thing this is my maintenance kit this is one of the smaller brs cases uh, I saw someone with one of these on Instagram, and until I saw what they had, I just had all my tools just kind of in my desk, and I was just like, you know what, that little maintenance kit's kind of cool. So you can take the bottom foam out of these BRS cases, and gives you a little bit more space to put extra stuff. Come on, man. Yeah, so open her up, and this is, like I was saying, this is the actual bottle of KPL I use. Obviously, this one's uh, a little bit more used than the other one, uh, a little bit more beat up. Uh, here is also those KPL micro swabs I was talking about. These are just basically plastic sticks with some microfiber cloth at the end of it, but nothing else is going to get in between that little crack between the pivots. So you might be cleaning these out with Q-tips or like a little paper towel or something like that. Uh, these I found are like the best thing to use for those little cracks. Um, also just kind of nice to have around. Uh, I actually use these probably more to clean my guitars and to clean my ballets because they get kind of underneath the bridge really well and in like those like really small places that, uh, you know, Q-tips might get to, but the cotton might get picked off and stuff. So um, these are just really cool kind of cleaning swabs to have on hand. Um, got Teflon tape. This is my Torx kit. Uh, this is my T10. I always know that's just like second from second from the top. Uh, don't use all of these, but it's just kind of nice to have them all in one place. Um, Bally spindle plus a bunch of toothpicks for it. Uh, this was the main one that I do use. Um, I'm mostly, so yeah, in case you guys didn't know, these were kind of my like um, my first, first well, and only Ballasong product. Um, Bally takedown tray. Uh, the way these work is basically you have your bite side and your safe side. You put two toothpicks in these slots, and then you kind of stack your handle parts as you take apart your belly, put your hardware in these sides. Anyway, these are, I think these are really cool, uh, super useful, super helpful. They were really born out of my frustrations with taking apart and, you know, modding and switching parts in my valleys and having to take up space and always forgetting which scale went on top and which on bottom. And I just like messed up during maintenance so many times that. I just had the idea one day, like, why don't you just stack all the parts? That way you could just kind of take them off and it's a lot easier to put back together. So um, anyway, keep that in my ma maintenance kit always. Um, also just like a nice little tray just to kind of throw parts in. Um, even when I don't use the toothpicks, I usually still use that for my hardware. Um, oh, but anyway, um, yeah, so I'm, these are for sale, by the way, in case you want one. But there were a couple of blums that I just kind of keep as my own, so... Anyway, there's my maintenance kit. Um, even if you don't buy a Bally spindle, I think it's just cool to have all your kind of Bally maintenance stuff in one spot. And I was having, you know, a hard time fitting it all in here. And I don't always want to be going in my big case just to, you know, crank a screw or, you know, whatever it might be. So, uh, yeah. Back to the Bally's. Start on this side. Benchmade 51. God, that was terrible. Benchmade 51 with our Jimpy Space Invaders. Uh, 51, I also got some tie screws in here. You might be able to kind of see tie screws, and then I anodized them blue just to kind of keep with the whole theme. Um, obviously, the pivots are not blue, but all the rest of the body screws, end pin screws are all blue. Not for the Space Invaders, but whatever. Um... This is one of the ones I was saying. You can see yeah, I've definitely used this guy. Still got some crap on there. Um, KPL's knife shield is actually also really good for getting like 
tape gunk and just crap off your blade. So I'll probably touch this up after this video, actually. Uh, but this was really like the second, you know, quote unquote, good flipping bally I ever got. Uh, I also learned a bunch of tricks on this. Um, flipped this for a long time before I stepped up to, I think my Alpha Beast was the next like good flipper I got after this. Uh, what was I going to say about this then too? Yeah, whatever. So 51. Oh yeah, not a great flipper, but I do remember the day that I got the Space Invaders. I was like, holy crap, this thing, like these Space Invaders just saved the 51. Uh, if you do have a 51, uh, I think Will Hirsch has made like a huge deal about like the 51 sucks unless you mod it. Um, I, I don't necessarily agree that the 51 sucks unless you mod it, but uh, modding it makes it better for sure. So uh, highly recommend if you do have a 51, check out some Space Invaders. If you can get them for a good price, uh, I think they go for like twice as much as Jimpy sells them for aftermarket. Um, I'm not even sure if he's still making them, but uh, if you can get them for a good price, I would definitely check them out. Um, pretty cool stuff. Makes them a little longer, makes them a little more balanced. Next, I've got my rep, which I almost sold, and I'm so glad I didn't. Uh, again, she's got like a little custom hardware in here. I got the black hardware, still got the regular sex bolt. So, um, you know, you still got the silver in here. These are actually a little different too. I think these came with like a giveaway or something, but um, yeah, I got blue. Blue modded, uh, I actually did the Anno on this too. It's not, it's not great, but you know, if I'm flipping, you can't tell. It's like, oh, that looks blue, like sick. That's my rep. Oh, look at these like blue and black. They're like twins. Very nice. Let's put the sets of twins together. Oh, I didn't even realize how, uh, how all my collection has like, it's double in its counterpart. I got my green alpha beast. I got my G10 and Thai sandwich that are blue and black. I've got my uh, Gemini and Archangel. And then, uh, well, this one's kind of a... Uh... But then I've got also my long guys. Long, just raw Thai long guys. And then, yeah, whatever. He's nice on his own. Uh, back to it. Yeah, I mentioned I do... Obviously, like, mostly Live Blades is my collection, uh, at least the stuff I like to flip most of the time. But uh, this is the main trainer that I use. Uh, technically speaking, legally in Chicago, you're uh, allowed to have ballys, but you're not allowed to carry anything with a blade over, I think it's like two and a half, maybe three and a half inches, whatever it is. Um People still do. Uh, I'd, I'd probably be fine carrying any of these ballys anytime I want. It's not it's not the bally of it that's, you know, not illegal to carry. It's just the blade length that's illegal to carry. Uh, so if I am ever, like, driving somewhere or whatever, uh, if I do want to have something to flip, I'll usually bring this guy with me because it is just a nice quality trainer. Uh, this is the Hom Prodigy. If we were to kind of retro name this, we'd call it the Prod A. That's how his naming conventions is gone. But yeah, this was one of the original Prodigies back before there was any other version. So it was just called the Prodigy. I sent this to Matty Stable Choppers, and he did this nice uh, mirror polish on here, which don't judge Matty by this because this was done like a few years ago now. Uh, so this has gotten quite a bit more scratched up since then. But uh, yeah, that's my kind of like the one trainer I really flip. Aside from my Barflies... Um, this usually doesn't even live in the case, actually. This usually is, like, in my car or, you know, sitting on my desk or something. Uh, this guy here I actually got overseas uh, at, like, a flea market. So not a great flipper, just kind of some sentimental value. Um, you can call it a CCC. Uh, not great. You know, mystery metal handles. Slap for days. Um, I mean, if you want... If you want play... If you want a tap test, like, we are not in the realm of performance flippers. Uh, pretty heavy. Grip isn't great, uh, but just kind of looks cool. And, yeah, it just has some sentimental value to me. I guess we can put the, can, these can be my, my sentimental buddies. Uh, second to last, another trainer. I was I don't flip this one too much. Uh, we're getting kind of the, into the section of the flippers case that I even don't even flip that much. Um, I just thought this had a cool looking trainer blade. Um, I'm a musician, so I thought kind of like the tuning fork was kind of cool. 
Uh, this thing doesn't flip great stock, but if you get these aluminum spacers, uh, it actually does flip pretty well. So uh, this is Max Ace, in case you're not familiar. Uh, Max Ace Banshee. Uh, I'm not sure if they're still making these, but uh, yeah, it's a pretty fun flipper. Uh, it's one of the few, maybe the only bearings uh, Bally's I still have. I used to have a Lucha. I think those were the only two I ever had, but uh, yeah, it flips pretty well. Um, you know, tight tolerances, no tap, nothing like that. Uh, a ton of body screws. That's really my only complaint. Uh, I actually used this in a Bally Spindle video. Uh, I used this during Bally Spindle development just to see, um, you know, make sure I could fit a ton of parts in case you did have a Bally that had a ton of parts. So, you know, I was doing some uh, product testing on the on the Bally Spindle, and I was like, well, which one of my Bally's has the most parts? And it was this one. I, I added them all up. I took the the original stock spacers, these spacers, all the body screws, uh, the latch, which obviously I don't, obviously I don't flip with latches, uh, the latch, the real blade or the trainer blade, the real blade, uh, everything. And I added them all up and there's, there's over 50 parts if you put all of these together and they all fit on the Bally spindle. So when I was able to do that, it's kind of like, okay, sweet. We got something here. Uh, one of the bigger complaints I've got about the Bally Spindle is that it's not big enough. That was kind of by design. I kind of wanted something compact that would kind of, you know, toss it in your case, disappear. Uh, something that could fit in one of the cases like this. So I wanted to keep it small, but again, like still big enough that it could fit everything. You know, even some of like the 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 Bally's with the most um, components and the most pieces, whatever. Um, anyway, not to get too much of a tangent on that, but. Max Ace Banshee, you can hear it's got that kind of, I don't know why I tried tapping it on there, but Max Ace Banshee, great. Trainers, these are my trainer buddies. Look at all these nice little twin setups. Anyway, last, it's the last Bally already? Last Bally already. You guys can already tell what it is. We got the Black Bally Song. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it how Google wants me to say it. Black Bally Song. Sholo. X-O-L-O -O is how this valley is spelled. Uh, I've heard this pronounced most of the time as Cholo or Zolo. Uh, pronounce it however you want. I don't really care. But according to Google, this is the Sholo, and that's how you would pronounce it. Uh, this knife is just really cool. Uh, Black Balasong is out of Mexico, and this is all kind of based around like Aztec design and Aztec uh, history and mythology. Uh, there's a, a, like a Mexican species of dog called the, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pronounce it, but uh, Sholo is short for that. Uh, and that's what this, uh, this tank stamp is. That's the, uh, the dog deity, uh, like of the Aztecs. And that's where the, that's where the name comes from. Uh, which I thought was really cool. You've obviously got this really cool kind of Aztec patterning on the um, on the handles. Uh, the blade is modeled after an Aztec weapon. I, again, I'm not going to try and pronounce it. I can't remember what it's called even. Um, and you've even got like these cool arrows that go along the sides. So uh, this thing is absolutely terrifying to flip. Uh, this thing would tear you up if you got bit by it uh, i've seen some bites from this thing not from mine specifically but other people who have uh flipped these and gotten bit and uh yeah it's not pretty um i i do flip this from time to time it's usually pretty you know light stuff it, it flips decent um believe it or not uh you know it's channel no really you know very little play no tap uh yeah it's just uh absolutely terrifying uh but beautiful um so yeah this is you know, one definitely kind of one of my more collector pieces, but um, that is. Let me put this with. This guy's, you know what? This is, yeah, this is a category all its own for sure. Uh, maybe I should have been putting them all out as uh, as I was going through, but I guess whatever. It's too late for that. Uh, this is, yeah, pretty much my collection, if we're being honest. Um, you can even, yeah, we can leave those guys over there because I don't really flip those, but uh, I could probably even take some of these out of here. You know, don't really flip this. This is kind of where it's at. This is what's up, guys. This is what's up. Uh, but yeah, if you made it this far in the video, 
thank you for watching. I hope I didn't forget anything. Um, if I did, maybe I'll drop it in the comment or the description. Uh, yeah, thanks again to Ethan for kind of inspiring me to make this video. Thanks to Maddie for doing the sick polishes on this and also my uh, BB Firefly. Uh, thanks to all you guys for watching my content and commenting and following, subscribing uh, over the past few years. Uh, should be a lot more to come this year in 2024. So keep an eye out for it. Keep flipping.